longer than any monarch in the country today, Tunku Abdul Halim has been a beacon of unity for his people. Crowds gather at Qadar's main stadium to welcome their ruler for a fundraising event to kick off new healthcare services in the state. His Majesty has been Sultan for 54 years. That in itself is a great deal of experience, a great deal of commitment in terms of time that he's given to generations of people. We calculated that he's attended over 300 events per year, and that is almost an event every day. I think about how he has he's performed over 40, 50 years. Keeping focused, I think, is the most important thing that I've learned. Keeping focused on what is the event actually for, who will it benefit, and how much does it mean for the people who are there. And I think His Majesty truly shows example of great compassion and care for, for the right yet. Like he did in 1970, Twanku Abdul Halim sets off from Kuda to the capital Kuala Lumpur again to step into the role of Agong or King of Malaysia. Since then, the social and economic landscape of Malaysia has transformed enormously, but the country's unique bridge between change and continuity will soon reveal itself. Every five years, Malaysia's elected representatives and government leaders from the country's diverse communities converge at Istana Negara, the national palace, for the installation of their new king or Yang Di Pertuan Agong. The federal head of state is appointed by the nation's conference of rulers, comprising sultans from all the traditional monarchies in the country. It's the royal democracy they practice that makes Malaysia's system of constitutional monarchy truly unique. The Conference of Rulers already existed from the formation of the Federated Malay States after 1895. The institution of Yang Diputan Agung was designed to accommodate the fact that you know, all these rulers should have a fair chance at uh, becoming the federal head of state. The fact that the Sultan of Kedah is now able to return to the throne is reflective of this embedded notion of fairness. You know, Kedah had an Agum in the 70s and the, the cycle has been completed and now it's Kedah's turn again and uh, that principle is very much uh, intact. This democratic culture is carried through into modern Malaysia and takes center stage in one of the most symbolic moments of the installation when the people's elected government leader, the Prime Minister, holds the responsibility of proclaiming the monarch as federal head of state. Pada hari ini, waktu dan saat yang gilang gemilang ini, maka Sri Paduka Baginda ditabalkan naik tahta kerajaan menjadi turus negara bagi Malaysia dengan bergelar Sri Paduka Baginda yang dibutuhan agung. The cyclical phenomenon of Tuanku Abdul Halim's second installation is made more pronounced since Prime Minister Najib's father, Tun Razak, performed exactly the same role during His Majesty's first installation. Four decades on, the principle of democracy remains at the core of both institutions. You have the ancient contract in Malay legend between the subject and the ruler, and the ruler is always subject to the law. Every Malay kingdom, there have always been checks and balances. The transition to the modern concept of democracy was quite an easy one to make for the institution of, of Malay royalty.
So we're here outside the grounds of Parliament and I, I like this setup because you have the cannon here. This sort of reminds us of a feudal past when each individual sultanate was grappling with the issues of foreign powers as sovereign individual states. And then you have way back in the background at the Parliament building, the symbol of Malaysian democracy where people's elected representatives uh, argue over policy. And in the middle here you have the figure of Tunku Abdul Rahman, son of a Sultan of Kedah and nearly the bridge between this past and modern understanding of democracy. Tunku Zain al-Abidin runs a policy research institute called IDEAS, looking at developments in the country's administrative institutions with a special interest in the partnership between parliament and the monarchy in Malaysia. No proceeding of parliament is valid unless it is a session in which the monarch, the head of state, the sovereign, has opened uh, that session. Parliament sits under royal authority. The mace, which is a symbol of royal authority, is placed in the middle of the hall for all MPs to see and to know that royal authority has been bestowed upon the in the proceedings and the debate can continue. The young Diputuan Agung is seen to be this final arbiter. I mean, if the other institutions fail, where do people uh, go? Where do people appeal to? It's the young Diputuan Agung. Data akan bersungguh-sungguh menjalan dan melaksanakan tugas-tugas yang berat yang telah diletakkan di atas bahu beta sebagai yang Diputuan Agung. It was during Tuanku Abdul Halim's first term as Yang Dipratuan Agong 40 years ago when the institution of parliament survived its toughest challenge. The suspension of parliament, sparked by the darkest episode in Malaysia's political history, would reveal one of its most formative lessons in nationhood. As a king, you are asked to make difficult decisions at difficult times. Well, I wasn't around at the time, of course, but uh, technically the emergency was still going on. There was some racial uh, tensions. The country in terms of security was in a state of high alert. So the institution of Agung was very important in expressing a sense of unity. I was very young, but I observed that it was also a very somber and tense uh, period in his life. There were a lot of very sort of big meetings that I could see as a child. The Prime Minister then, Tun Raza and Tun Dr. Ismail, were frequently at the Istana. Members of the armed forces were also at the Istana, cabinet members. I knew them by name. I obviously didn't know what major responsibilities that they held at the time. With the support of the monarchy, Malaysia's National Operations Council steered the nation swiftly through this troubled time and Parliament was finally reopened 18 months later by His Majesty Tuanku Abdul Halim. The partnership between Tuanku Abdul Halim as Agong and Tun Razak Hussein as Prime Minister in the 1970s would go on to lay the foundation of an economic transformation through primary industries, manufacturing and diversified sectors that continue to drive Malaysia's development today. Here we have a monarch who has been on the throne for 53 years in his state, 
and has been Agung before when the Prime Minister's father was the Prime Minister. And in terms of experience, in terms of the sheer breadth of what the Agung has seen and lived through, uh, that is of immense value. Though the world has seen many other long-serving monarchs, only in Malaysia could one return to the throne after eight others have taken turns to maintain the country's unique bridge between change and continuity. Malaysia enjoys a diverse, multicultural, multi-religious social landscape cultivated from centuries at the crossroads of major civilizations. Its sultans, including Tuanku Abdul Halim from Kedah, have always carried the responsibility of representing Islam in their traditional territories. When their states came together as a modern federation, the paramount ruler they elect becomes constitutionally enshrined as head of the country's official religion. Ampun tuanku, sembah patik, mohon diampun. Patik mohon limpah perkenan, Seri Paduka Baginda tuanku, bagi patik untuk menyembahkan Al-Quranul Karim. Ampun tuanku. Before His Majesty, the Yang Dipertuan Agong or King takes his oath, it is always preceded by the deeply symbolic presentation of the Quran. If you look at it in a constitutional point of view, the institution of Yang Dipertuan Agong is similar to the function of the monarch in Westminster. The Queen of the UK is, you know, head of the Church of England. But the role of Agong as head of Islam, I think, is much more uh, pervasive. Every year, observations are made on the country's topmost vantage point for the time-honoured practice of sighting the new moon that signals the holy month of Ramadan. Before any confirmation is made, reports must go immediately to the National Palace. Assalamu alaikum. Ini Datuk Wazahid Diwanti, Mufti Wilayah Persekutuan, melaporkan daripada Menara Kuala Lumpur. Only with the consent of the king can the keeper of the ruler's seal issue the announcement for the start and end of the holy month. It was in Kedah, Tuanku Abdul Halim's home state, where Islam was first embraced on the Malay Peninsula. Beginning with His Majesty's ancestor, Sultan Muzaffar Shah in 1136, Kedah's royal rulers have served as protectors of the faith, as well as patrons of its theology. Di dalam pendidikan Islam, hubungan antara Sultan dengan agama Islam ni memang tak dapatlah kita pisahkan. Shafi Ismail is headmaster of Kedah's leading religious high school, the Tengku Mahmud College in Alostar. Mak Tak Mahmud ni bermula tu daripada sempurna dengan nama yang di pemangku Sultan Kedah, iaitu Tengku Mahmud. Today, the students have put their books behind and stepped out of their classrooms to welcome a special visitor. Untuk Maktab Mahmud, Tuanku Sultan akan berangkat ke Majlis Aidil Ilmi pada setiap tahun. Jadi, benda ini akan menjadi rangsangan kepada setiap pelajar lah yang belajar di Maktab Mahmud ini yang mana Baginda Sultan akan menyampaikan hadiah-hadiah kepada setiap orang pelajar yang berjaya dengan cemerlang di dalam peperiksaan.
Tapi untuk tahun ini, Tengku Puteri telah pun menggantikan tempat uh, baginda dan sumbangannya terhadap pendidikan di negeri Kedah juga memang memainkan peranan penting. As a child, I was put through religious classes, Quranic classes where I was free to ask questions to my ustaza. I think a lot of